Hey, welcome to the channel. Typically we talk about Tableau prep and learning all things prep, but today I wanted to talk about something a little different and that's just some tips to pass the uh, Tableau Certified Associate Consultant exam. So if it's something that you've been thinking about taking, you work with a Tableau partner, maybe it's something that you have to take, um, you know, these are just some of the things that I ran into on the exam and I figured I'd share to help you better prepare for your experience. So let's jump in. All right. So again, these are just some tips to pass the certified associate consultant exam. So how does Tableau describe the exam? Well, this is the description when you look at the, um, when you're registering for your exam. So a Tableau certified associate consultant is a highly skilled at working with business professionals to develop and share dashboards to derive the data-driven insights. This certification exam is geared towards individuals with six to 12 months of Tableau-specific experience and an advanced proficiency in dashboard design and analytics. So this is the exact description that you see in the exam prep. Um, so this is also, according to Tableau, the steps you should take to prepare for this exam. So the first thing you'd wanna do is look at the analyst learning path and designer learning paths. So these are part of the e-learning. And uh, when you take a look at these learning paths, there are specific um, courses that they have that fit into these segments. So they're suggesting these are the two that you need to take a look at to understand all the topics on this exam. Um, the next thing is that you should obviously look at the exam guide. And so I'm also gonna include a link to this presentation in the uh, description here, because I've directly linked to all of these resources. Um, so again, you will wanna take a review of that exam guide to just kinda see, it provides like maybe one or two sample questions and then just overall topics that you should understand going into it. Um, you did, there's also some language saying that you should become familiar with the Tableau Blueprint and there is a couple of questions around Tableau Blueprint, but it's really more understanding what its purpose is. Um, and, but you know, it is still good to understand what Tableau Blueprint is, what it's meant for, all of the different roles that fit into that. Um, so again, there's another link that will um, take you to that so you can become familiar with the Blueprint. So I've got a couple of example questions. These aren't going to be what's exactly on the exam. Um, I'm just basically working from memory. These are the types of questions that would be on the exam. So this is to help you understand exactly how familiar you need to be with these concepts. So for the first example question, it'd be something like you're given this table, right? So you've got the sample superstore data set. You've got uh, things broken out and you've got a sales column and a total sales column. And so the question would say something like, your customer currently has a workbook with the table shown. What method do you need to use to get the same result? The same result being you have a sales column broken out by category and subcategory, and then you have a total sales column where all of the values are the same. And you'll get some uh, answers like a quick table calc, max function, window function, or level of detail calculation. And so in this case, um, the total sales column is representing a level of detail calculation. Um, so again, this is just to show you uh, how they're structuring these questions and what you need to be familiar with. So you do need to be able to understand the difference between a table calc, a quick table calc, um, some of these functions and a level of detail calculation. You definitely want to be familiar with uh, what level of detail calculations do and, and how you would apply them in certain scenarios. Um, the next question, so they do have some very, very high level questions on data structure. So for example, they would give you a table that looks like this. You've got three columns from south, three columns or three uh, rows from south, from east and from west. So three separate tables from each of the regions. And they say you have these three separate tables as shown. What method should you use to get the combined table shown here? So we start with three separate tables. What method do we need to use to get them combined into one table? It'll tell you a left join, full outer join, a union, or an inner join. And so in this case, we're just stacking the rows on top of each other. And so we've got a union here. So again, the concept here that you've got to be familiar with is when you're um, doing any type of data preparation or restructuring data, whether that be joins or unions, you need to understand 
um, how those tables come together. And so you need to understand the concepts of joins versus unions. Again, uh, the learning uh, paths might go over some of this um, and, and just the exam guide as well will go through the topics that you need to um, have an understanding of. So um, not too many questions on this, but again, you might see a type of question like this basically seeing, do you understand the difference between a joint and a union? The third question um, might be something like this, right? So your customer has the following table with two string columns. So important uh, to understand the language that's being used in each question because they, you know, might trip you up because the answers can look, two different answers can look like they're correct based on how you uh, understood the language of the question. So pay close attention to the exact words that are in the question. So again, it says your customer has the following table with two string columns. So even though year has 2020 in it, that is a string value. And so it says they want to create a date column using 15 as the value for day. So what's the correct calculation? And so they will list out some calculations because they want to know that you understand what each of these calculations does. And so you should understand what the correct answer is here. And so while some of these, the, the make date function, for example, while year, um, month and 15 might look correct, uh, and you'll also see that there is make date with month 15 and year. Well, uh, the make date function requires a format of year, month, and day, right? And so that means that D that can't be correct because that's the wrong format. And so they want you to understand the correct format of it. But, uh, C also isn't correct because it says year by itself. And then month you see is wrapped in the month function because what that does is that returns uh, the integer value for that month. And remember, the question said that we had two string columns and the make date function requires three integer values. And so since year is a string value, if we tried to use C, that would give us an error. And so the correct answer in this case would be B. So in this case, we're turning the year into an integer. And then we're also having to wrap the month calculation in two or the month column in two calculations. We're having to wrap it in date parse to turn it into a date that the month function can then return as an integer. And then we've got the integer of the day value. So you will want to brush up on different calculations. Make sure you understand um, the exact format of them. There's going to be a couple of questions that ask you a specific uh, calculation. Uh, so just make sure that you've got an understanding. There's a bunch of references on um, all of the Tableau calculations, their structure and what they do. So you'll kind of want to brush up on that. And so for another example question, this one is uh, something that you'll see because part of this exam is they want to understand or they want to test your understanding of customer scenarios, right? If you're taking the consultant exam, it's because you're working with Tableau customers and you need to be able to provide them the best solution for their specific case. So this one says your customer currently has several Excel spreadsheets that they combine, clean and add new columns to prepare for analysis. The process is very manual and they would like to automate and schedule it. What products would you recommend? And so we've got Tableau desktop in Tableau server or online. We've got Tableau prep builder, uh, Tableau server, uh, Tableau desktop and Tableau prep builder. And then we've got an answer here that says Tableau prep builder and Tableau server slash online with data management. So what they're trying to do here is again, You've got a customer, they've got this specific scenario and you've got to put your consultant hat on and you've got to think how would Tableau truly want to recommend you to recommend the products to the customer. Um, you might think, uh, you know, C server desktop and prep builder. And while that would help them prepare a flow that they could, um, you know, run and plug their new data into, Tableau Prep Builder by itself does not have the ability to schedule flows on online or server, right? Um, now, so in this case, the correct answer would be D, right? So Tableau Prep Builder 
Tableau Server or Online, and Data Management. Because Tableau Prep Builder is what you're going to use to prepare your data, um, you need Tableau Server or Online to publish that flow, and you need Data Management with Prep Conductor to schedule that flow. Uh, now, if you're familiar with Tableau Prep, you might be thinking, well, they only need Tableau Prep Builder because there's scheduling via the command line, and so that would solve the problem for them. And while that's technically true, again, you have to think, how does Tableau want consultants to recommend their products? And the way that they would want us as consultants or as a partner to recommend their products, really you want to go with the solution that makes the most sense and how they've built it out, and that would be Prep Builder with uh, data management and server on online. So just, again, think about these things. If you're very familiar with Tableau Desktop or Tableau Prep Builder, you might know some workarounds to um, certain features, uh, but you want to think in terms of how does Tableau want me to answer this question. So some things to think about. Again, think in terms of how Tableau would think. How would they want you to answer the question? Just because you're very familiar with the project and a product and you know a, a workaround doesn't mean that that's how Tableau wants partners uh, to solve a certain solution or problem. So again, when, when you're taking a look at these questions, really think about how would Tableau want me to answer this. Um, again, server prep blueprint questions, they're on the test. Um, there's not very many questions on them, but it's still good to know those topics so you're not caught off when you see those questions. Um, you got plenty of time for this. It's a 90 minute test with 55 multiple choice questions. And so for the most part, you'll be able to at least have a good sense of which answers are not correct. And you can flag them, take some time to think about them and come back to them. Uh, so that way you don't spend too much time and then not leave enough time for yourself towards the end of the exam. Um, and again, you only need a 75 to pass this one. So don't be too stressed about getting 100%. Um, if you're, you know, 80, 90% sure that you know the right answer, just go with that one and move on through the questions. Um, and then again, another thing I'll reiterate, make sure you really pay attention to the exact words they're using in the question. That's very important to understanding the correct calculation to use when they present you with those types of questions. Um, these are some of the learning materials that they recommended in their study guide. So again, there's the analyst learning path, the designer, um, desktop one fundamentals. Uh, there's a couple of things in here. Uh, well, there's a lot of resources in here that you could look at for this exam. Um, now, again, I didn't do too much studying up before I took this because I've taken the uh, specialist, the associate, the certified or the desktop professional exam. So I felt like um, I would at least take a first attempt at it at just to understand what's on the test. And I ended up passing. And so really taking a look at all of these materials, I think you would be really best suited focusing in on these things, right? So the Tableau blueprint, again, to just help you understand what that is. Um, the Visual Analysis Best Practices Guidebook is uh, good to take a look at so that way you understand how Tableau thinks in terms of be best practices because there are going to be a couple of questions on the exam that will show you a dashboard example and ask, uh, you know, your customer has this dashboard, what would be a better way of formatting this dashboard? Or what's, how would you recommend they construct or organize this dashboard? And so you want to understand what Tableau considers best practices and then free how-to training videos uh, now if you're still very new to tableau that then maybe the uh, analyst or designer learning paths uh, will still be beneficial to you um, the big book of dashboards in general is a good um, visual design book to have and to go through but as far as what it would actually cover on the exam there's really not too much so it's a good resource to have, but I don't know how much it will help you on this exam. Um, so really, that's that's all the tips I have. Um, you know, if you have some questions, um, you need some assistance on kind of what you should look at, reach out to me and let me know. But um, other than that, I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one.